Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We are back with Mass Effect 3 and we are doing the last DLC before we do the final mission really, Assault the Elusive Man's Base, which is end game material. So we're going to do best DLC. I love this DLC. It's just... It's fan friendly really isn't it right dark personal apartment sent me a message about this apartment? I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. Are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge. Clear your head. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Focused. If you say so. Thank you. And make yourself at home, damn it. It's yours now. <laughs> I'm sure I can manage. Okay, good. Been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. Be careful out there, Anderson. You too, Shepard. Feels wrong now, doesn't it, while him and him and the rest of the Earth forces are being absolutely blitzed. In fact, in, while the whole of the world and the galaxies are being blitzed, we are exploring and enjoying ourselves. You never asked me about this, but my wife just called. My ex-wife. Nobody likes to talk about the toll that long months apart can have on military relationships. She wasn't military. She couldn't handle it. But it's not even about military and non-military. Damn it, it's space flight. Space flight. Finding the mass relays, miracles of engineering. Human imagination rising to meet our desires. We pay a price for that curiosity, that drive. Our relationships suffer. People we love suffer. But that's reality. And it's worth the cost. I must have thought it was. I guess I still do. In the end, you just have to hope you made the right choices. Okay, let's listen to all these notes. The Normandy? A brand new ship. My ship. You don't forget that moment. The first time you're standing there. The whole crew looking to you for direction. Unforgettable. I've led men and women before that. Seen a lot of combat already. Always manage to find my way home in one piece. Do that a few times, you begin to think you know better than the next guy. Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you're lucky, really lucky, you find yourself on a good ship, in front of a good crew. A crew you can trust with your life. Gifted. Disciplined. Brave. All of them, eager to set sail into the endless black ocean. I still remember my exo asking what my orders were. Shepard, I said, let's see what we can find. Yeah, we were the exo. Slavers, if it had got them more drinks. About the time my money ran out, 
My new friends turned on me. I was outnumbered. Things didn't look good. My plan to get out of there involved lots of punching. Well, that worked for a while. Then a table hit me. Or I fell down. When I came to, I saw a Salarian putting the rest of the troublemakers down. A Salarian? Moved like a damn cat, I swear. When everybody was out cold. Or running. He walked over and helped me up. N7, he asked. Yes, sir, I replied. He looked over my collection of unconscious friends, nodding. Not bad, human, he said. Then he walked away. I had met my first specter. Learned an important lesson that day. No matter how good you think you are, there's always somebody quicker, faster, and a hell of a lot smarter than you just around the corner. That little lesson's kept me alive more than once since then. There's not many quicker than Shepard, really. Right, we're going to continue downstairs and then we'll go up. A few months ago, I had a chance to sit down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today, the Admiral is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program. It's all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no navigator. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Well, that has to be so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? Uh, well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. None of which I'd like to share. But uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is, war isn't orderly, and the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit, your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader... Well... War tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader, then? Mm -hmm. A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission. 
but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. No, no, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war? Yeah. I was there. My first real combat. First for a lot of us. I remember one night early in the war. Strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ. Everyone was dead silent. Just the sound of breathing. Good men. I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Just the rattle of the shuttle. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens? Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe, now we knew. We weren't alone. And we were in trouble. So there we were, about to face an enemy as different and unknown as we could imagine. I knew I had to say something, keep the men relaxed. So I turned to the soldier beside me, Hendrix, I think, and asked him how his mother was doing. Fine, he said. Why? Because I heard your mama so ugly the Marines thought she was a Torian. Almost shot her. <laughs> I got a few smiles. Then Hendrix turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of you, mama, that started this goddamn war in the first place. Scared the Torians shitless. Everyone had a good laugh at that. And the boys fought great that night. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. This DLC is so low, rich, friendly, and it's just, just so much lower in it. Just in this apartment alone. Right, let's continue. What was I talking about? Early days, right? People ask why I joined the military. Everyone talks about honor, duty, sure. But that's never the whole truth. It's a hundred little things that add up to commitment. I joined because of a dog. Yeah, a dog. This patchy, mean son of a bitch that used to bark at me every day on my way to school. He'd snarl and I'd start running. Get the hell out of me. I was just a kid. I remember being in a bad mood one morning. Angry, I can't recall why. When that dog started in on me, I snapped. Started barking right back. We both kept at it until we had nothing left. Dog never bothered me again. Why'd I join the military? Hmm. Sometimes you just gotta howl to make things right. I'm not gonna answer any of these messages yet. Catalog. We got nothing in the catalog, have we? Bedroom wise, we got nothing at the moment. I gotta go and buy the stuff. Which we can do once we leave and come back, I think. Right, let's continue, continue on downstairs. Nothing here. Is anything in the kitchen? Sure, I can talk about Commander Shepard. Big topic. There's been a lot written about the Commander, but most of it isn't true. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story. But I know the woman. Worked with her. Fought with her. Trust her with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? She's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. God only knows how she got out of some of that. Makes your head spin. Thing is, you never heard a complaint. Never once got, no sir, I can't do that. She never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes she forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over her getting back home. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. So 
Soldiers like the commander are rare. Women like Shepard, even more rare. Nothing there. What's this? Stereo control. Isn't that the music? Anything in the bathroom? No. Any law in this bedroom? Yes. I'm actually going to head upstairs now, so we can continue looking for lore up there. The Turians. Hmm. Mm, well, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics and the individual, but I have a great respect for the Turian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline come together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, years later, I had the opportunity to observe and train on Palavan. It was a turning point for me. And I would encourage any soldier to try it. It's a unique experience to put yourself in the squad of a Torian commander. My commander was an uncompromising bastard named Bartox Oryx. If you can find him, just ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbling. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species training. There you go. <laughs> and if you do find General Oryx, let me know. Good hearing about oh stereo no okay it's good knowing about Anderson and all, not just about Anderson but the past things we don't actually get to see right in here nothing in this room armor N seventy set defender Cerberus I'm not gonna be wearing that. Obviously, I'm going to keep the N7 Defender. I like that one. Casual. 
What am I gonna wear now? Keep that one. That's a weapons bench, which we don't need. Ooh, spar area. Anything in here? Oh, that's one. You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. Acting CEO Eli Zander was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Xander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the IES well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation, but it still ended with the Torian scientists in shackles and a human Torian fist fight in Chorus Den later. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Normandy, she was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to stand there. Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, one of the highlights of a long career. Right, let's head downstairs. Because then we can go and answer our machines, which he said that that's one of the things we have to do. So we've picked up all the lore in here so far. I don't know if it's going to update. I forgot now. Um, okay, what we got? We have private terminal. Dinner at sushi place on me. Hey, Shepard, I've got a few things I wanted to go over with you. With the Normandy in dry dock, I figured we could meet up at the Ryushi sushi place down in the woods. I hear it's the best joker. Citadel shall leave. Meet Joker. Let's go. It's where the fun begins. Yeah, we can't explore just yet. It'll take us straight there. That's right, people. I'm jumping the queue because I am Commander Shepard. Ah, Commander Shepard, your table is ready. Do we can, uh... I was hoping someone would comment on the fact that I jumped the queue. Yes, I'd like a pint. Very good, Enjoy your evening. I'd like a pint, please. The fish. It's a nice seat. Can you pick one of these seats? Good evening. Would the lady care for a drink? Yes, please. Maybe later. I'm meeting a friend. 
Very good. Oh, Shepherd. Hello, Joker. Hey, Shepherd. Not bad, huh? The sushi place is serious. Like, French guy at the door serious. Only had to save the galaxy twice to get a table here. You see the line outside? Okay. Oh, look who it is. But here I am, drink in hand. Best pilot in the universe and a rock star. <laughs> Any news from the Normandy? Ah, oh, you know, maintenance stuff. It's hard knowing a bunch of strangers or poking around in my ship. I, I mean, your ship. The best thing we can do right now is Parker and let the techs do their work. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Maybe an oil change, space tire rotation. Right. Trust me. It'll do her some good. Oh, I trust you. Not sure about those shifty aerospace engineers. Always stealing the silverware. Let someone else do the work for once. Pack its orders. You're on shore leave. Yeah, whether we like it or not. I'm sure you'll manage. I may need a drink that comes with an umbrella. I'm the first human specter. I'll get you two umbrellas. Awesome use of power, boss. So, your email said it was important? My email. I'm here because I got a message from you. The hell? I, I didn't send anything. Commander! Excuse me. Sorry. Nine's business. Commander, this is urgent! I don't think that's the umbrella lady. Commander Shepard, I'm staff analyst Maya Brooks. Alliance. Excuse me. Alliance Intelligence. There are people trying to kill you. I think she's aware of that. Uh, no, I, I don't mean Cerberus and the Reapers. I mean other people. New people. They're... It's... <sighs> Someone is hacking your account. Comm channels, personal records. They're targeting you specifically. Targeting me? What do they want? The intel isn't definitive yet. Last time, I guess without definitive intel, we almost landed troops on a gas giant, which is bad. Hang on, Brooks. Take a breath. <sighs> From the top, what do you know? Excuse me, you don't have a reservation. Here they come. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's performance is brought to you by Random Acts of Violence. <laughs> you use me as bait? Yep. That's what we do. Oh, I like this gun. Hang on. Hi. And this is another reason why I choose the tech because not only can see it doesn't matter the fact even if I've got no guns. I can throw a turret there. I've got backup. Yeah, there's a few of you, but I have backup, so screw you. Got this gun. Definitely does headshots. Hi. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. Commander! Get down. There you go.
Jeez. Guys, I don't care if the current temperature units still work, but the new ones in all along this section. The customer has permit and wants, to, wants work to start immediately. Even paid up front for crazy bonus. Get it done. Back Frakes, Citadel Air. Such a crazy DLC. Brooks, I see some sky cars across the gap. Maybe a landing pad. Sensing that. Morning, lockdown in effect. Please stay in your home. Hey. Hey, hey, fish worker. Why don't we just go in there? Grab a turret, let the turret kill him. from Easy Meat. We do not make anything that tastes like Krogan, and certainly not barbecue wasabi. That is not the sort of business we do. Please restrict your orders to what is in the, fi the official catalogue. Sincerely, Greg Bass, Shipping Director, Easy Meat Incorporated. Why were they trying to sell Krogan meat? What the heck?
have a turret. There's somebody behind that. Got him. Sniper. Somebody there. Gotcha. Jarvik reporting in, Commander. The crew is on their way. Good to hear. Things are a little dicey. Jarvik's coming. I am not surprised. Is Jarvik coming? I wonder if it's random when, when they come, like different ones turn up, or is it just going to be the same ones each time? Because it was Rex and Liara last time, wasn't it? Throw that down there. What's in here? Ooh, terminal. Oh, it's any money. I don't care about the money. I wanted law. We want law. We want law. Give us law. Come on, game. Give us what we want. Here we go. Credits. Law. Yay, Festus. I know you're licking the fruit when I'm not around. Stop that. Seriously, B. Lovely. Someone's licking it. Brooks, found a way across. It's locked down. I'll try to override it. Yeah, I'll do that in a bit on the look around. Nothing, of course. Let's bypass it. gun battle. Starting a gun battle in the middle of nowhere, like you do. Yeah, we could do with somebody actually coming and helping us right now. Luckily I've got all this help. I've got the turret and the orb helping me. Right, Mercs, you had no idea I had this much backup, did you? Stupid sniper. Come on. Data pad. Shasta, darling. Look, here's the deal. You just can't say stuff like that to Giala. She will freak out. I swear to you, her blue head will pop right off. I doubt her dad was a vulture. Sort of doubt it. V. Money. We want more law. Of course I did. All staff, I'm aware some of you are considering leaving my employ and working for those hussies over at Micah. They don't care about you like I care. I super care about you and the good kind of caring, not the creepy kind. Salash's vest, manager, Val Allen belts. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. Data pad, variables. I think I tore my ACL doing something extreme, starting to black out from the pain. Yeah, Gibber. The Gibster, Jalamski. P.S. Okay, guys, really, I'm blacking out. What do they do? Wonder what happened to them. Oh, crap, grenade. Get closer to them.
Understood. Okay. Brooks over. No, out. B uh, Brooks out. Oh, over and out. Brooks. Oh, damn it. Liara. Say that. Landing pad is over there, but it's behind a locked gate. Let's look for a control panel. I like your outfit. A uh, control panel, right? It I is good to see you. Tank. We'll talk about it later. A shame. I quite liked that restaurant. We'll talk about it later. Sissian stalwart, assembled by hand in fabrication tanks that are filled with filtered spring water shipped from pure ice mountains of Imenea. The Sissian stalwart isn't just a car, it's a life choice. That's a Sissian Motors guarantee, manager Snackle Venner, Sissian Motors. Can't read on that one, that one's smashed. Sissian Dauntless, looking for something unique, something that will turn even your Asari neighbours green with envy. Look no further than the Sissian Dauntless. This rugged beauty doesn't just get from one glamorous vid premiere to the next, it ushers you on a cloud of smiles. The best deal in the known universe, or oh, my name isn't Snackle Veneer. Manager Snackle Veneer, Sissian Motors. This is Ian Gallant. Ever want to experience danger from the safety of your own sky car? Ever need to explore the vast reaches of the unknown and be home in time for dinner? The Sissian Gallant can take you there, strong, silent, and willing to charge into battle along the most exclusive boulevards. You can breathe easy with Sissian Motors. Any more? Can we read all of them? No, there's not everybody's. Okay, it's sad I wanted to see all of them. See what all the cars are. That's where we gotta go, but I'm gonna look around because I wanna see if there's anything else. Any more lore? No more lore on the vehicles. No. Oh, terminal. Stand back. One moment. Hello. Could you please open the gate? Thank you. Please leave. Well, I could have done that. But we chose not to. like old times. Rex has gone that way. 
You're all gonna die. Rex is having too much fun, isn't he? This is what this entire game is missing from the start, really. Being able to have your old teammates. Busy, Good having job, fun. Commander. Busy having fun. Someone want to tell me what's going on here? Who were those mercenaries? They were heavily armed and using C-Sec shuttles. I don't know. I've never seen them before. I can't believe you survived all that. They had guns. And grenades. And those drone things. It's all right. I'm calling Commander Bailey. See what's going on with C-Sec. Okay, that sounds... Wait! Wouldn't that just make whoever you contact a target too? She's right, Shepard. Until we know more, it's a huge risk. Okay. For now, we run this ourselves. Right. Ourselves. On our own. Outside the law. Okay. Yeah. Brooks, it's okay. I know this is a lot to deal with. I got shot. I got medigel, but still, I took a desk job explicitly to not get shot. And you killed a hundred guys with a pistol! Well, yes, that did happen. I mean, who does that? Well, you, I guess. But besides you. They said the medigel might make me jumpy. Do I seem jumpy? How did you get mixed up in this? I monitored data for Alliance Intel to prevent fraud and hacking of officer IDs. Like, uh, someone using an Admiral's pass to get into a nightclub on the Citadel when that Admiral is fighting on Tuchanka. I wrote a tracking program. It's really neat. I named it Mr. Biscuits, after my cat. Brooks. Right, sorry. Anyway. Mr. Bis... Uh, my program detected a breach in your classified files. Soon, everything we had on you was compromised. Personnel files, mission reports, everything. Since when does hacking personnel records involve heavy weapon fire? Think of what criminals could do if they had Shepard's military access codes. Or Spectre codes, even. Explains why they need you dead, Shepard. Nothing to stop them till the damage is done. Okay, let's figure out who they are and shut them down. Ideas? Maybe. That pistol you picked up. For such a tiny thing, it packs a punch. Never seen anything like it before. Nor have I. Let me see if I can dig something up. Well, you can try. But I should warn you, I haven't found anything yet, and I've been digging pretty deep. I'm sure you have. Glyph. Collating relevant intel for review, Dr. Tassoni. Thanks. All right, the armor's on point. What about the rest of the crew? Yeah, what about those slackers? Joker, you've been busy. I found some folks who actually like being shot at. Permission to come aboard, Shepard? Yes. The team are back in town. Right, speak to squad mates. I haven't actually got long, so I'm going to finish this one here, guys. In the next one, we're going to speak to all of our squad mates, whenever they all are. I think they're, I think they're all here. 
and then we'll continue with the story. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and until next time, take care.